So the next topic is uh, qualities of an effective practitioner. So I think I have already told you about this uh, under philosophical assumptions of uh, easy integration model. So qualities of an effective counselor or uh, practitioner, uh, we call these three, these four things to be the qualities. First is empathy. Second is unconditional positive regard. So in short, uh, we will say UPR. And uh, the third is uh, genuineness. Fourth is concreteness. Okay, all these four are given by Carl Rogers. Some books call Carl Rogers to be the father of counseling, but he did not want uh, such fancy titles. But uh, the important thing is, yes, uh, these are the core conditions of counseling according to him. When he uses the term condition, uh, don't think it is kind of compulsory condition. He is talking about the environmental or climatic condition. So if you are going to provide these four in the counseling session, then the client will open up and resolve his problems or uh, he will improve his mental health. That is what he meant by core conditions of counseling. Okay, so uh, some uh, pop psychology people used to say that uh, there has to be a Buddha statue or uh, the counseling room should be within, uh, you know, should be painted in this color. But I don't believe in such things. Even uh, Carl Rogers did not believe. So if you are going to provide these four things in any environment, counseling can be easily done. Of course, we need to keep things confidential and uh, we need a private setup. But otherwise, uh, about the color or Buddha statue and all, they are not that much important. If at all you have got a lot of money, you may do some interiors and do such things. But uh, I don't believe in such things. Okay, if at all you come to our office, you will see one table and then few chairs in the counseling room. We will not have something else. Okay, so let us first understand it's the empathy and unconditional positive regard together. Then I will move on to genuineness and concreteness. Okay, empathy, I think uh, most of you uh, would know about this term empathy versus sympathy and all they will say. Yes, empathy is trying to understand uh, whatever the other person is undergoing and uh, yeah you may not be able to exactly get it but if you are trying to understand what is the other person's situation or what is the other person's emotion then you are empathetic but are you always able to do that uh, empathy with everybody okay the problem is uh, when you see someone uh, not uh, following uh, the principles that you have or values you have uh, then uh, empathizing with uh, such people is difficult okay let me take some extreme examples okay so if you see a person who has uh, done crimes like murder okay will you be able to empathize with him oh you have done a murder i know i understand uh, you know what made you to do the murder uh, you may not be able to do that because uh, our value system is different from that person's value system okay so when uh, carl rogers uh, was asked uh, uh, carl rogers you are a great person and you are able to be empathetic with everybody but we are not able to be empathetic uh, what we should do to be empathetic like you a lot of people asked then carl rogers gave this idea if you are going to unconditionally accept the client then that is possible okay what is this unconditional positive regard regard means respect okay so you will give respect to the client uh, positive manner without setting any condition sometimes we will give respect okay so when i worked in the college or when i worked in the company i used to give respect for the superior sometimes it is not positive it is out of fear okay so that is uh, uh, you know unconditional negative regard okay we are not talking about that unconditional positive regard so irrespective of uh, their background you are giving them respect in the positive manner so if you believe them that uh, they also deserve uh, some acceptance then whatever they talk uh, you will be able to empathize with them you will be able to listen to them and understand from their perspective but if you do not have unconditional positive regard you will hear them but you will not listen to them okay listening uh, includes understanding and uh, in uh, empathy uh, it is very important okay so you need to have unconditional positive regard okay so if you are able to get unconditional positive regard towards everybody great but uh, if you have difficulty i will help you with a few more ideas uh, so carl rogers uh, told uh, people are uh, whoever wants to become counselor to unconditionally accept others for that he wanted us to believe one thing what is that human beings are basically good and trustworthy okay so human beings are basically good and trustworthy this is what uh, carl rogers believed and he was able to unconditionally accept people and then he was able to empathize with them okay will you be able to believe that okay if you are able to believe it great or if you have disagreements look at the term human beings are basically uh, good and trustworthy or in some other books he has written uh, inherently good and trustworthy so this inherently basically tells that uh, they were uh, born with uh, good qualities or uh, they are trustworthy but certain things happen in their life might have changed them 
okay if you take it in that manner you may be able to uh, get this unconditional positive regard if you think it is too much positive and i am not able to understand or accept it i have seen lot of uh, people basically not trustworthy basically very bad then i will tell you about uh, uh, gestalt therapy founder fritz perls ideology which is similar to uh, carl rogers but in a way it is different also so uh, this uh, gestalt therapy founder uh, fritz perls uh, he says uh, people are neither good nor bad okay so if you are not able to believe uh, carl rogers then uh, you can uh, look into the statement given by fritz perls people are neither good nor bad okay so if you are going to look at uh, people as good people bad people you are categorizing them okay so fritz perls do not want us to categorize them he says that people can be people they can become bad they can become good it is all based on the perception okay uh, a revolutionist uh, will be seen by government uh, to be a terrorist okay for the government it is terrorist but for the people he may be a revolutionist okay so if you take robin hood okay robin hood uh, steals a lot of money from rich people and then donates it to poor for the poor people robin hood is the best person in the world for the people uh, who lost their money or properties he is the worst person in the world so you cannot categorize people into good or bad so they can be good or bad based on the perception or based on the situation and how what you are going to look at them okay Uh, if you think uh, this is also not uh, enough uh, to get this unconditional positive regard i'll go to some more neutral statements uh, given by other uh, schools of thought or approaches let us take transactional analysis the founder of transactional analysis is eric bon eric bon says people are born okay we look at the term okay so when uh, we use this term okay it means that it is not good bad and all it is simply okay how is the class okay how is the food okay so there is a possibility for it to become good or there is a possibility for it to become bad but right now it is okay it is not unbearable okay so that is what uh, uh, eric bon wants us to believe so human beings are people are born uh, okay and his followers removed that word born and right now lot of transaction analysts believe that human beings are people are okay right so please keep that in mind and if you believe that uh, then uh, you will be able to see some goodness in everybody okay there are a lot of case studies where you would see a very very bad person or a serial killer later becoming a good person okay so if you look at uh, these people who believe uh, people are okay uh, they are against the capital punishment okay or uh, hanging uh, punishment death sentence because if you are going to kill that person then there is no possibility or uh, there is no way for this person to become good okay so you are stopping them from becoming good and uh, you will think that the person is really bad okay so many countries in the world have abolished capital punishment thinking that people are okay right so we can rehabilitate them they are not born bad they are not born with uh, these disorders okay so now you will if you say that uh, there are uh, some people with uh, personality disorder like anti social personality disorder serial killers when they were born they were not serial killers certain things happened to them and then they became serial killers okay if we had intervened that time then they would not have become psychopaths or anti social personality disorder unfortunately nobody uh, you know intervened and then they became one okay so let us not get into this diagnostic idea that uh, some people are very bad yeah they have become bad but before that they have been good okay so when someone is born they are not born with uh, these uh, you know uh, abnormal uh, or disorders okay so let us keep that in mind and as i already told you let us not get into good or bad paradigm and uh, that is not our subject matter okay if you are not able to believe this then uh, let us go to maslow maslow says when people's needs are not met they become abnormal okay so let us take a person who has done a murder okay so it may be the person's uh, love and belongingness needs are not met i am not saying uh, uh, it is right or wrong but that is the way we should understand as a counselor or psychologist i am trying to help the client to improve the mental health i may not be able to stop the crimes okay so i if i uh, help them to improve the mental health then uh, crimes will automatically be reduced okay this person whose uh, mental health is bad gets into crimes if i help him to improve uh, his mental health and uh, fulfills his need in some way or other then the crime may not take place okay so let us take other extreme examples like uh, child abuser okay which need is not met so if you go by maslow he'll say physiological needs are not met because sex is a physiological need okay so if you say that uh, this person uh, why he had to abuse a child he could have got married so if you take indian context uh, to get married uh, age is not the only criteria there are many more criteria okay so you have to have lot of uh, bank balance uh, then you should have abdar opportunities and when you achieve all that uh, you will become 30 or 35 okay or if you take uh, you know uh, relationship or uh, this love and belongingness needs that is not getting met and then uh, they get into extramarital affairs if you say that extramarital affair it is uh, against our culture or it is really wrong 
when people's needs are not met they get into extramarital affair okay so i, I have seen lot of clients with the extramarital affair they do not start with the physiological need they often start with the uh, this uh, love and belongingness needs so if we help people to improve their mental health automatically they'll uh, reduce uh, you know the crime rates will be reduced so if you take our maslow he says uh, when people's needs are not met they get into disorders or they become abnormal so if you say that uh, some people are born uh, uh, you know with disorders like antisocial or something it is not like that so their needs are not met that is what uh, maslow says if you take uh, people uh, who are having extramarital affairs we will hypothesize their love and belongingness needs are not met okay i have met lot of clients it is not their physiological need it is mostly love and belongingness need then it may go to physiological needs later if you take uh, child sexual abuse if you uh, look into the situation then uh, their physiological needs are not met that is how we will take it but if you say that uh, why the person uh, did not get married he could have got uh, a boyfriend or girlfriend why uh, the person has to do such things in india to get married the age is not the only criterion there are many more criteria like uh, getting settled in the uh, in terms of finance uh, having bank balance and then uh, having a house car something in order to achieve all that it may become uh, 35 years old okay then uh, they may get into alcoholism then uh, child abuse may happen most of the time uh, if you look at the crimes like child abuse it is done under the influence of alcohol if you go by that then alcohol should be banned but uh, that may not happen immediately okay so if you try to uh, pinpoint uh, that the, that person is wrong maslow will say that it is not that person it is the need not met so if you help them to improve uh, their mental health and fulfill their needs then the crime rates will surely come down that is what maslow told so i want you to look at uh, things whatever people say in terms of this okay so if you are going to listen to the media uh, and uh, if you are going to simply believe whatever they say then that is not fine okay if they are uh, saying uh, uh, about one uh, uh, case like uh, they have killed uh, uh, the uh, one lady has killed the children and uh, she tried to kill the husband or something do not see that lady to be someone wrong okay i am not uh, telling that uh, what she has done is right but as a psychologist i want you to see her love and belongingness needs are not met or something like that then uh, we'll be able to get unconditional positive regard in case that lady is coming to us to us as a client we'll be able to unconditionally accept the client and we'll be able to listen to the client and understand from their perspective